Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Enigmatic Entertainment. I'm back again with another video. You know what it is. You know the drill. Let's get it popping. It's another album review, guys. And this time it's going to be Mob Deep, my favorite hip-hop duo, their second album, The Infamous. This is a hip-hop classic. You know the Mob Deep crew coming straight out of Queensbridge, <sighs> Queens, New York, Queensbridge housing projects. They keep it gritty, gutter, 90s New York hip-hop, the golden era as they say, my favorite time. So, you know, let's get into it. Once again, like the previous review, this is going to be a track-by-track -track thing, starting from top to bottom, standard editions. Let's do it. The start of your ending, in parentheses, 41st side. Now, this is first track. It's an introduction. You know, Havoc starts it off. It's a head bopper. Introduces you to the mob's way of life. Or dark, menacing, Havoc instrumental. That signature sound puts you in New York in the 90s. Threatening. Blunt. What more is there to say? Starts things off. Sets that tone for the rest of the album. The 41st side. Is a reference to 41st um, Avenue or Street or you know whatever you can look it up on Google Maps and all that. Uh, basically, the street that's you know that their Queensbridge housing projects, I believe the South Building is on, and that's where they grew up and chilled and hung around at and all that. You know they make a reference to it, I believe, a few times in the album and various songs. Okay, track really starts things off and you know the title and the start of your ending so I guess the first track makes sense right next track the infamous prelude this is a interlude there's um three of them in the album and I will be getting to them and covering them as well this is just a prelude to the survival of the fittest and here prodigy he talks he doesn't rap it's not an acapella there's no beat it's just him and the crew behind him pretty much um in the studio and he basically takes that hardcore personality that he's known for on his raps and he brings it to a basically I would say spoken word, but they're not they're just just talking ish, you know what I mean? And he speaks the truth about living life in his hood, you know? Let everybody know he's not a big tough guy and nothing like that. He can get murked too, but that is all good. He's down for fighting, he's down for shooting, you know, allegedly, you know, and all that, you know, I'm talking about using weapons, whatever he gotta do, you know, to take you out. And this interlude is famous because it started a beef with uh, Keith Murray because uh, Prodigy has a line where he talks about rappers that talk about how much weed they smoke and all that space stuff that doesn't make sense and basically talking about how he's going to bully them like this is high school and all that. This is, this is one of my favorite interludes like of all time. I freaking love it. It's like two minutes of Prodigy just talking that talk like for real. Like freaking is this is funny. Like you need to check it out for real. Sometimes I'll just be listening to that, yo, yo, Prodigy, talk, that talk, yo, talk it, talk it, son. Uh, next track is Survival of the Fittest. This is the second single released from the album. Survival of the Fittest, only strong survive. Whew. The video is classic. It got Mob Deep in the classic mid-90s gear. It got uh, cameos by Nas and P. Diddy. You know, freaking New York hip-hop legends in their own right. It got, um... They take that tried and true, tried and true phrase, survival of the fittest, you know, Darwinism and all that, turns it into a catchy hook, you know, dangerously tough, tough track. Um, Prodigy starts his verse off talking about, you know, that classic line like, there's a war going on outside, no man is safe from, Ooh. I, I, and it rings true. Hard-hitting lyrics like that ring true to society to this day, even internationally. People in the hood in freaking Canada, anywhere, name a freaking country, they can feel that, you know. Um, and, it, it, you know, it's it's crazy how that war, it could be police brutality. It could be gang warfare. It could be just random criminals. It could be just poverty, just you know, just, just beef with whoever you have beef with, issues with, racism, whatever it is. This virus uh, pandemic, it, the war outside is no man is safe from it. It could be natural disasters. It, it, you could reference it to so many things. That's, that's one of the reasons that line is classic to me. 
But uh, moving on, he touches about topics, um, depression, compares, he makes comparisons to the Vietnam War and the violence in his hood, using weed and liquor to cope with the troubles of life in the streets. Habit comes on afterwards, you know, talks about the struggles of making money on the block, you know. He got a classic line that says, no matter how much loot I get, I'm staying in the projects. And it really brings home that point of his loyalty to his neighborhood and sometimes the, the ignorant stances that we might take. Um, stubbornly and whatnot as youth, you know, I believe it was like 19, 20, 18, something like that when he recorded it, so it makes sense. It's funny because I heard an interview of his later on, like years later, talking about, like, yeah, I left. He basically was like, nah, I'm not, I was not staying in the projects my whole life. <laughs> you know, once I got the money, I dipped. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. Respect the honesty and all that. And it truly gives you the passion and anxiety that comes with the lifestyle. Overall, it's one of my favorite Mob Deep songs, one of my favorite songs on this album, a top three song on this album for me easily, and probably one of my favorite hip hop songs, like especially like that 90s New York era of all time. Next up is Eye for an Eye, parentheses, your beef is mine. Now this track takes that classic line once again, flips it for another menacing hook from Prodigy, Eye for an Eye, your beef is mine. He speaks on the camaraderie between him and his crew, taking on each other's beefs with outsiders, whether that's from outside the neighborhood, the town, the set, whatever. And this track is a bit of an anomaly, and it's pretty cool and rare, because I believe this is one of the first tracks that featured a Wu-Tang Clan member on a non-Wu-Tang Clan album. Raekwon the Chef is on this song, as well as Nas, who just had released Illmatic recently uh, recently before this, and became a already hip-hop like icon you know, and have all of them on the track together, um, back in 95, I was like a baby, you know, but I'm pretty sure that was pretty crazy to be in New York at that time, you know, I, I don't have any memories of it, but I'm sure things were pretty wild, um, personally, it's not one of my favorite tracks on the album, though, honestly, it's, it's not, sonically, I don't rock with it that much, if the beat was a little bit different, I'd vibe with it a lot more, Considering the caliber of rappers that's on the song, I think this would have been one of my favorite songs probably if it wasn't for the production. And I'm going to leave it at that. I don't hate the song. It's just one of the more bottom ones for me um, production-wise. And production is um, one of the top two things I look for typically like in a song or top three at least. So, you know, it takes a heavy hit if I can't rock with the beat. Moving on is Just Step, in parentheses, Prelude. This is the second interlude on the album. And this one basically is acapella. This time they're both rapping, just a no beat. Uh, Mob Deep Affiliate, Big Noise, who is on this album a few times, raps first, talks about, you know, uh, got three different court cases in different places, and he's facing uh, years of prison, uh, other braggadocious stuff about his street activities, and then Prodigy raps a verse after him, and then it takes us right into next track, Give Up the Goods, in parentheses, just step. Big Noid is on this song again, and I think he's on this album about four or five times. I mean, especially if you count like all the ad libs and all the background people in the studio and whatnot, he's on there a few times. I believe this song though, this is the fourth and final single from the album, and I think this is the where um, his verse um, is one of the best verses on the album, and I believe this is what got him his solo record deal. His verse starts off. Yo, it's the R A double P E R N O Y D. Niggas can't f with me. Uh, came straight out of Q B. Something, something, something. Like I can't remember his whole verse, but when it comes on, ooh, like I freaking love it, honestly. Then Prodigy, Havoc, they do their thing on the mic as well. This song features production from Q Tip, who is one of the few producers on this album besides Havoc, and he also did a lot of the mixing and was very influential overall to this album being even made and it being so high quality really especially compared to their um debut studio album q tip had his hands on a lot of the um the audio things behind it this production is a little bit more up tempo as well compared to some of the other album um, songs that has like a darker tone and this is easily once again one of my favorite tracks and i understand why it would be a freaking good choice for a single Features a sample from a song called That's Alright With Me by Esther Phillips. And this is probably in my top five. Maybe my third. This is probably my fourth favorite song on the album, if I had to guess. But it's definitely top five. Next up is Temperatures Rising. This has like the only non-hip-hop feature on the album. Crystal Johnson sings the hook. Um, this whole song is basically a letter to Havoc's brother, Killer Black. Who was a known guy in the neighborhood on the run for a murder charge. Havoc goes first, rapping to his brother like... 
and basically just saying like you know be safe um you know talking about sending money through western union um we're not we're not snitching don't worry if we catch a person that rats on you we're gonna you know do the so on and so forth you know it's all good um they basically just showed their love and support for their homie and brother and this is the third single from the album and well well received turn of events from the rest of the album with his more rough and, rough and aggressive tone and subject matter. But it's kind of funny that even though this is a somewhat softer track, subject matter wise, it still goes pretty damn hard, honestly. Up next is Up North Trip. And how can an album that covers drug dealing, shootouts, fighting, and all that stuff just be complete without a song about the repercussions? This song is about going to jail. Now is very much necessary and it comes from the perspective of people who've been through it prodigy had takes the um role and basically tells you like you know this is what happens you go to central booking or whatever you go up here you gotta do this and all that stuff like your your journey through prison is kind of um kind of very telling you know it kind of paints a very vivid picture in your mind and you can even imagine yourself being locked behind those bars Luckily, it's just your imagination, and when the song goes off, you're still in your freaking bedroom. So, hey. I like that they mention a song about this stuff, because I don't like when people just rap and rap and rap and rap about street activities, and they don't freaking tell you about the repercussions of what could happen. So, that's for one thing. I can definitely respect this song. It's not one of my favorites, but um, it's necessary and needed, and um, thematically, I see how it fits. And that I can respect. It wouldn't be like my top five, but it'd probably be like number six or seven. So somewhere really in the middle as far as how I would rank it. You know what I mean? Not up here, not down there. But, you know. And and the reference, of course, up north means taking an up north trip to jail, prison. That's where a large majority of the correctional facilities are in New York. For anyone that's like outside of the um, New York metropolitan, you know, our, our area and whatnot. So, so I don't know if they use that terminology still to this day, but back then, up north trip is just going upstate. There's a plenty of prisons and various songs. You, you've probably heard about them. Next up is Trife Life. This song has the duo talking about, you know, stories about setting up people to get robbed and doing robbing yourself and all that stuff. And just basically the paranoia of living in the hood, um, the anxiety that comes along with it. Once again, painting very vivid pictures in the mind. And that's important. Um, once again, talking about possible repercussions about from doing your dirt. Prodigy tells the tale of a woman who has, he knew previously, and he says like, you know, I haven't heard from her left since I left the whole lonely in tears, haven't heard from her in years, you know, stuff like that. And that she's hitting him up now, calling him, telling him to come meet her. Apparently she's in Brooklyn. He says, um, you know, Brooklyn's a rough neighborhood. Um, you know, he's from Queens. He, he says like, I'm gonna call my boys. Um, get ready. We're gonna go down there together, and in case that she's trying to set him up, basically, he got he got his, he got people watching his back, and it speaks to the anxiety you feel when you're heading to unfamiliar territory, and also how it's hard to resist a woman with a, to meet up with a woman who might be down. You know what I mean? So it's kind of interesting in that aspect. My question is just, if it wasn't the setup, what did you expect your boys to do, Prodigy? Were they supposed to just join in on you, or were they just to like sit, kick back and go home, or, or just watch? Like I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just kind of funny to think about. Um, Havoc, on the other hand, spits a verse talking about a dude coming from out of town, coming to their neighborhood, and how the neighborhood guys want to set him up for a robbery, and that he's with his girlfriend and stuff. Like he's coming to visit his girlfriend in Queensbridge, and they know about it and whatnot, and they want to rob him after he uh, leaves their place. The two opposing verses make a nice combination on this track. And is definitely one of my favorites on the album. Next up is QU Hectic. Up in Queens, we about to get hectic. Up in the Bronx, we about to get hectic. This is my favorite song on the album. My Probably my favorite Mob Deep song. This is one of my favorite hip-hop 90s songs, New York songs ever, whatever of kind of freaking list you want me to make. It's going to be right freaking there. I love this song. I mean, there's not much else to say, really. It features a sample of Kitty with the Bent Frame by Quincy Jones, as well as a sample of Black Frost by Glover Washington Jr. The 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 crew sets an intro, 
And then Prodigy, Prodigy comes on after that, kicking off a verse, which I feel is one of his best verses of all time that I've heard. And then there's a simple hook talking about how hectic things get with the QU crew, you know. Havoc follows up with one of his also hardest verses as well, quite impressively. And if nothing else, it really paints the picture of being in Queensbridge in the 90s. It would be this song that, that really does it for you, you know what I mean? One of my favorite hip-hop songs ever. QU Hectic, easy, number one. I think it's very underrated. Never really hear people talk about this, whether it's in reviews, interviews, or anything like that when they bring up this album. And I feel like I need to really bring home that point that this has some of the best Havoc production I've ever heard of, ever. Very dark, gritty, very, very, is magnificent. Um, next up is Right Back At You. As you can probably imagine from the title and the general tone of the album, this is about firing them shots back at your enemies, um, quite literally sometimes for the Mob Deep crew, it seems, allegedly. This song, once again, features frequent collaborator Big Noid. As I said, he's on this album like freaking four times or something like that, I think. Also features Raekwon the Chef and Ghostface Killer for Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, they share a verse going back and forth. It's pretty good. Once again, it's another decent track. The production just doesn't do it for me. Like I said about that other song or two, this is one of the few tracks on the album that I really just don't find myself going back to. And I'm sure a lot of people love it. And I'm sure people hate the fact that I really don't like it that much. But once again, it's not really because of the rappers. These are high caliber, top tier rappers and all that. I understand that. I know. Trust me. It's just the production didn't do it for me. I'm not going to like the production on every song. No problem. Next up is the Grave Prelude, which is the third interlude on the album. This just... This one features Big Noid, basically, during a shootout. Big Noid gets shot. Mob Deep is standing there over his body and preparing to call 911. And, once again, Big Noid is heavy on this album, like, for real. But, um, even if he's not, like, rapping, you know, like, in this interlude. This just leads right into Cradle to the Grave. And, this is an interesting track. Really makes me question where the line came from. Because there's an album, there's a, there's an album, Thug Life, Volume 1. You know, Tupac and Thug Life, that came out shortly before this album did that has a song called cradle to the grave also and i'm just like you know basically the title means from the day you're born to the day you die which when you're living in the hood the projects so on and so forth you got that street life activities crime and all that it might be very short unfortunately you know or if you're like um in the, the gang life you know it's like you're you're in it till you die basically that's how it would go Prodigy and Havoc spit verses about evading police, going after the man who shot Big Noid in the previous interlude. Once again, vividly painting that picture of life on the streets when crime and the likes cause such harsh repercussions, but yet you feel like you're trapped in it and you just don't know what to do. It's like you're born into it, you know, and that ties in once again with the title and the hook. Sometimes you just feel like there's no way out. And this song does a very good job of expressing that, you know, it's not all just glorifying like, those activities, you know what I mean? Next up is Drink Away the Pain, in parentheses, Situations. This song features Q-Tip, who is the only non-Wu-Tang or Queens rapper on the album. And, of course, like I said, he did a lot of the mixing, um, production, and stuff like that. He was pretty important to this album as well, which is pretty cool. This song uses personification, which is always nice to see people using literary devices, especially in hip-hop. I love it. Uh, props for that. For artistic points, this definitely goes up. Prodigy raps about liquor, uh, like E and J in Old English, and he speaks on them as if they were like women, talking about how they get jealous because he's with her and he's with her and, you know, this and that, and basically giving them feelings and their own personalities and whatnot. It's pretty cool. Havoc talks about Hennessy, which is like his favorite, I guess. Talks about how his mother wants him to go to Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, AA and all that, because of his drinking habit being so, um, bad he's like alcoholic and whatnot um q-tip however switches it up and raps about various fashion brands like tommy hill figure polo timberland gas and all that other popular brands from the 90s and still popular today and whatnot q-tip might be considered off topic compared to the duo but he definitely holds his own lyrics lyricism wise like rap wise he really held his own that's what i doubt and i think this is one of the most creative songs on the album but it's definitely not one I play at all. Honestly, I went back and listened to it because of this review. Um, it's all right. It's, it's okay. Um, I think largely in part is due to my own personal stance on the subject matter. Um, you know, people that know me know how I feel about drinking, know how I feel about fashion, so on and so forth. You guys get the drill. But 
it's not um it like I said artistically it works you know and it's a nice change of pace from all the um more aggressive songs on there next up is shook ones part two and what is there to say about one of the best songs that they've made and put them on an international level and whatnot you know this is the first single released from the album one of their most violent songs ever probably various media outlets have included a song on their top list like violent songs best hip-hop songs 90 songs new york songs mob deep songs everything this you know and a lot of people this is their number one song on the album for me this is like my second or third favorite personally uh this was the first single release as i said and it is a sequel to their um single shook ones part one which was not on any album or whatnot except for the 25th anniversary edition of this album which you should check out song features one of prodigy's best verses just like i said on q you hectic um who can forget classic lines like Rock you in your face, stab your brain, what you know is bone. Like, pff, come on, you know. It's a prime example of the anger that many young and old people can feel alike, especially those living in the hood, in the projects, in poverty, um, and all the other things that we might have to deal with and suffer through. I can think of, or I can't think of, rather, many classic hip-hop songs from the 90s that I still listen to or hear other people listen to and still enjoy as much as this one. And that still rings through where they know the lyrics and the beat and it's so classic. And for that tick, 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 tick thing from the production, um, they said in an interview that they sampled that from an actual like stove oven, which is pretty cool, you know. Years after hearing the, this part, part two, I went back and I found part one and listened to that. And whew, the original is freaking great, too. One of the darkest production songs from Mob Deep I've ever heard in my life. Um... Uh, but I see how they like took changes and improved on it and whatnot, you know. Um, this will, this has been and will continue to be seen as one of the best, most iconic hip hop songs ever. It's just very sad knowing that Prodigy is no longer with us, and it bothers me. Uh, he he passed, um, I believe, in twenty seventeen, June. He would have been forty three that year if he made it to his birthday. It's is crazy because he was only forty two. Like. I have siblings that are that old. Honestly, I do. So, it's just... it just... I don't know. I mean, I just... I... Um, let's just give a moment of silence for Prodigy before I wrap up this review with the last track. <sighs> Prodigy, you are missed very deeply by your friends, family, and loved ones alike, I am sure. That goes without a doubt. You're one of my favorite rappers of all time. Part of my favorite duo of all time. And you are sorely missed. Moving on, we have Parties Over. Final track on the album. Once again, features Big Noid. I think this is the fourth song he's on. I think, something like that. Um, as well as Ty Nitty on part of Big Noid's verse. They, they share that verse. This track is, as the title and hook state, is about the party being over, you know. Um, it's like when they, they visit a club, you know, they shut it down, basically. They get into fights with people. Everybody starts dipping. They, vamoose, and all that, you know. This is the album closer, and it fits, considering it's party over. And as such, it's quite fitting that for, like, the last two minutes of the freaking song, Prodigy just shouts out everybody from the freaking Queensbridge crew and a whole bunch of various rappers. Um, really, just, like, just, no, seriously, about two minutes of him shouting out. Uh, your big noise, party's over, tell the rest of the crew. Yo, and he shouts out like Capone from CNN, you know, Capone and Noriega, uh, I think Killer Black, uh, I think Ty Nitty, a whole bunch of people. Not a bad song overall, really not, you know what I mean? Not one of my favorites, like I said, it doesn't crack my top five. More so like in the middle maybe, I don't really go back and listen to it like that. But it's definitely not a bad track, like you could play it and I wouldn't be like, yo, I hate that trash or nothing like that, you know what I mean? so that's all the tracks on the standard edition recently the 25th anniversary edition was released and that it was like a few weeks ago that the 25th anniversary of the album was um you know was because this album released in 1995 in april i believe um right now we're in may and so i felt it'd be fitting to do i i meant to get this out sooner guys I meant to get this out sooner uh, but stuff happens, you know, I haven't been feeling good, and it's a, 
other things that arise, you know, don't need to get into details like that. Um, just bear with me, you know what I mean? I'm trying. Um, I just felt it was fitting to do a review for it, considering it's the 25th anniversary, and it's one of my probably top 10 favorite hip-hop albums of all time, and it's a classic. And for this review series, I'm mostly focusing, as far as right now goes, I'm focused on albums that are considered classic, that I do enjoy, and of course, are hip-hop. Right now, that's the criteria. I don't have a specific um, age range or anything like that. So that's just the criteria for right now, because it's just getting started. And I hope that you stay tuned. This album put the infamous mob on the map, like Ty Nitty, the Twins, and all the other people that are in that group, and got them their record deal so they could put out their own albums. This is a New York album. This is the New York classic. This came out after Illmatic and 30 Return um Enter 36 Chambers and, and Ready to Die. And this just took it even further. You know? Some people prefer Hell on Earth as far as Mob Deep albums or murder music maybe. I prefer Infamous. Hey. You know? But hey, maybe I'll do one of the other albums later on. But for right now, I just want to say you guys listen to me ramble on about another album that I enjoy. Of course, no album is perfect. Like I said, I don't give ratings. This isn't going to get a 10 out of 10 or nothing like that. But I love this album. I love hip-hop. You see the shirt. You know what's going on. You know what's popping. It's Enigmatic Entertainment. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for freaking subscribing if you have already. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. Click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Share it. With your friends, family, co-workers, share it on Twitter, share it on Instagram, share it on Discord, I don't care. But you know what the deal is. Keep it popping. Stay safe. Stay. Keep up with the hygiene. Keep up with the quarantine, the lockdown. Stay indoors. Watch videos. Watch my channel. You know what's popping. I'm going to be back soon with another video. Thank you guys for freaking being there. Let's stay supportive. Follow the channel on Twitter. Follow the channel on Instagram because that made one. I just have no idea what to freaking post on it, guys, because this is not my forte at all. Uh, I still got a Discord server. And I still got a freaking PS4, freaking Switch, all that stuff. We could chop it up about video games, music. I don't freaking care because you know I'm here for it. Get in the comment section. Leave a comment if you have any questions, comments, anything like that about the album, any songs on it, Mob Deep in general. Rest in peace, The Prodigy. <sighs> I'm out, guys. That is Ma Deep, the infamous Enigmatic Reviews.